Hey, Jim Hoffman here for EMS Office Hours. This is your Monday Minutes. Um, today, I'm going to talk about uh, an aspect of patient assessment when it comes to rating a patient's pulse. Now, often we are very used to uh, giving a, a, the rate of the pulse, the quality of the, of the pulse, right? Is it regular or irregular? And when we talk about rating quality, you might ever be doing what I'm going to be talking about today, okay? But some things that we do uh, don't always uh, sort of translate to what the doctors and the, and the nurses do, right? So doing, uh, the, describing the, the quality of, of a patient's uh, pulse rate is, uh, in the way I'm, I'm going to describe in this Monday Minutes, is sort of a, a uh, you know, consistent with what they do. Uh, for doctors and nurses, right? So while we might be saying things like a pa uh, patient's pulse is weak, we might say it's faint, right? So which one is it, the weak or the faint? And the interpretation of that can be different depending upon who you're talking to. So when we talk about this, we're talking about the volume of the patient's pulse, right? And, and what we try to do here by using these this technique and what I'm gonna talk about is to try to help describe that potential baseline volume of the patient. And what we're talking about mainly is that movement of the artery wall by the pulse wave, and it's determined by the patient's stroke volume and the condition of their vessel walls. And that can change depending upon what's going on with the patient, right? Is it a cardiac event? Is it a traumatic event? Okay, so all this sort of, uh, you know, will translate when you're talking about the, the patient's uh, quality or the volume of, of, of what you might think their baseline is for that patient, right? So what we're talking about is um, a, a sort of like a zero to four sort of um, description, okay? Um, so when we talk about zero, that's when you got a patient has no palpable pulse. It doesn't necessarily mean the patient is dead. It just means that you cannot feel a radial pulse. You cannot feel a palpable pulse, okay? Um, so that's how weak it is, right? So you say zero, and that's telling them that there's in the docs that there is no palpable pulse. So if you say the patient's got a, you know, a, a, a plus zero, a zero plus, or a zero um, uh, uh, pulse, then that's telling them that you have no palpable pulse, okay? Now we talk about a plus one, um, that can be talking about when the patient's pulse is detected, but it's very faint or very weak. But like I said, we can verbally tell them that the, pa the patient's heart rate is, is faint or it's very weak, but by telling them it's plus one, that tells them, sort of the universal description, that it's a weak pulse or if, uh, it's detectable, but very weak or very faint. Okay, so by using plus one, you're sort of giving that consistent description that they're already used to and that what they're documenting. Okay, plus two, that's pretty much normal pulse. Okay, and plus three is when it the pulse is increased, not increased in speed, but an increase in the force, an increase in the pressure. Okay, in increase in the volume. Okay, and plus four is that very very strong, very very bounding. Okay, again, not necessarily a rate. But we're talking about the force, the force of that pulse rate, the pulse rate that you're feeling against your fingers when you're taking the patient's pulse. Okay. Now keep in mind, guys, this can be described again as plus or minus, right? Now, depending on who you're talking to, what textbook you read, you can be describing it as plus one or one plus, right? You even I can be, I've even seen it as just them describing it as zero, one, two, three, or four. Not even using the pluses. Okay, it doesn't really matter, but I think the one, the zero through four, numeric is what's going to actually account when you're describing that to the the patient. Okay, to, to the patient's uh, doctor or to the nurses that's accepting the patient. Okay, uh, I think the the key is for you to be consistent when you are describing this and when you're documenting it. Okay, because these are great ways, guys, to go ahead and document much better. For your patient when you're using your core report to be able to document better and it's also a great way to uh, be able to present these patients to the emergency room okay in a consistent way okay so by using this zero through four sort of technique instead of trying to say it's 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 um you know it's strong it's it's bounding it's weak it's faint it's 
it's uh, whatever the, whatever kind of description you're going to make. Instead of trying to use words that maybe one doc might 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 sort of um, you know think is one way or a nurse might think is another way, you're using this numeric, okay? And that numeric is a way for them. It's a standard that the doctors are using. It's a standard that the nurses are using. And us as other healthcare professionals that are out there, and we should be using the same thing. We should be putting this into our toolbox on how we are presenting patients either verbally or within our ambulance call report, okay? So I hope you can use Monday Minutes. I hope you'll sort of implement this when you're next, giving your next verbal report, when you tell the nurse or the doctor when you give a report the patient has a heart rate of of uh, of 80 and it's it's plus one and regular or plus three and regular, okay? Um, you know, the way to sort of let them know that you're talking their language, right? You might already be doing this. I, in fact, have been doing this for quite some time and it is very clear when you say this to a doctor or a nurse what it is that you're meaning, okay? And I think when you're doing a patient handoff and you're doing documentation, it's very important for us to be clear on what it is that we're trying to convey, okay? Without using a lot of words or using words that might be uh, confusing or that one doc or, again, or, or a nurse might, uh, you know, translate to being something else, okay? So I hope you can use these Monday Minutes, guys. I hope you'll implement this. If you are already using this, I'd love to hear if you are using this already in your uh, practice out there as, as a paramedic or as an EMT. Let me know in the comments below. Uh, if you're not using this, give it a shot and share this video with your EMS pals and let them know there's a nice, quick, easy way to sort of describe the patient's the quality of that patient's pulse okay so uh i hope you can use it again let me know if you're using it i'd love to hear about it or if you have a technique that you're using you think might be better let me know as well guys if you enjoy this type of content enjoy this type of training and clinical knowledge building i urge you to go check out terramedic on demand this is really an exclusive membership just for ems professionals it's geared towards the ems community Go check it out, guys. Just click the graphic here. Or click the click the access uh, link in the bottom here and go check it out. Get all the details about Terramedic On Demand. You can join either as a free member or as a premium member. Again, guys, I hope you can use these minutes. If you have some of your own, send them over to me. My address is contact at emsofficehours.com. Until next week, as always, Jim Hoffman, stay safe.